Hi guys, I've been looking at uh, the Corps of Engineers water control data and they have, I, tr I try not to use the Department of Water Resources as a data source if I have an alternative. Um, so I found this site with the Army Corps. Um, there's been some speculation I've heard about whether the operation of the dam as far as uh, flood control and passing water was a bit different in 2017 than it has been in years past. So I um, got the graphs for every year from 1995 forward and uh, threw them into my OneNote program here just to be able to compare them and talk about that. So first let me acquaint you with these graphs. At the top is an idea of the precipitation that fell. That actually doesn't mean that much because since some of it's snow it doesn't all run off. It doesn't have the direct correlation that it does in watersheds in other parts of the world. I pretty much ignored that. Um, the blue line here is the growth pool, pool. That's when the lake is full. This gray area is the conservation zone, and you will notice that it moves around quite a bit. And the 1st of May, it begins increasing. By the 1st of June, it's full pool. And this white space between these two is what is reserved for flood control. On the right is the storage in acre feet, and then on the bottom here is the flow in CFS. The red is the inflow, the green line is the outflow, and this scale over here changes quite a bit according to the amount of flow there has been, inflow there's been in that year, so um, we have to keep an eye on that, it's easy to misjudge. The month scale across the bottom here also changes from year to year they alter that slightly so that's something to pay attention to as well and this is by water year which is not a common concept to those of us who don't live in the west so it starts October and goes to September Lake Oroville is a flood control dam as we all know and the federal money that was given for its construction was given for the purpose of flood control so that is one of its primary missions. With a flood control dam, it's designed to catch large sudden inflows and then meter it out downstream. And uh, from just general conversations I, in Warville, I know that damage can start around 80,000 CFS for downstream flow. So it's a bit of a balancing act um, to both meter the flow downstream and make room for the next event to keep water, which is of course the commodity that they're selling, and stay in the in the gray conservation zone so that they have all the flood control room they need. So starting in 1995, there were three flood events, and a flood event to me is anything over 50k just for the purpose of my um, demonstration here. There were three of those, and look at the spill patterns. First of all, they let the reservoir get full, of course. Now, they just barely got into the flood zone, into the white area here, and they spilled pretty significantly. This is, uh, looks like it's maybe 90,000 CFS or just over 80, and brought it down in a period of, I'm going to say, two to three weeks. Then when the next event happened, looks like they spilled almost 60 that time and brought it down in what is probably a week and a half. Move into 1996. They were working at the top of the gray zone here. They, they it was not significantly low when they came into uh, that water year, so that caused them when they had these events, which were not very large events, because you see our scale over here now. Um, we're just over 50,000 on a couple of events. Um, and to because they were at the very top of the zone to get back down into that gray zone, they had to spill, looks like about 45,000, which is still well within downstream capacity and no issues. 1997, of course, had the infamous huge flood event with uh, the early January storm yielding inflows of 280,000, and then another one in late January with inflows of 60,000. They did use the flood control space. This is exactly what it's designed for. This functioned as designed. Um, however, 
they had to have outflows as high as 130,000 CFS, and there probably would have been downstream flooding anyway, but certainly that exacerbated it. Um, had they been a little bit lower coming into the year, then they would have been able to do a more gradual release there. And as a flood control structure, that metering is, is one of its primary functions. So it's desirable to, to have that gradual release. Okay, going on to 1998, only one event with inflows over 50K. And uh, from the flow standpoint, this seemed to be to be a pretty good year. If you can see here, the green outflows have flat tops which kind of indicates gradual um, release of water. Also, they were pretty low. It looks like about 28 was maybe, 27 was maybe the top one. They were uh, within the gray zone when they started, and they stayed within the gray zone almost completely, except for just a little bump um, in, looks like, late March. Nineteen ninety nine only had one event. Uh, they were operating pretty well at the top of the pool at that time, but um, there were only looks like minor releases, twenty five thousand or so. And again, there's the flat top, so that's that's kind of good. What you'd like to see, and brought them back in the zone. When they get into this area of March and April, where, where they know that the the gray area is coming up to full capacity in uh, May, sometimes they'll just kind of be in the flooded area a little bit and run parallel to that because they know capacity is coming up to meet them. So we'll kind of watch for that. Um, 2000 only had one event over 50,000 CFS and uh, flood control space wasn't used. The outflow stayed under 20,000, no issues. 2001 was dry and look at the scale over here. Um, now these peaks, which look like they would be storm events, when you look, it's only 8,000 CFS coming in. You can see the reservoir level is low. Certainly no issues with flood control. Same in 2002. And 2003, although 2003 they did have enough storms to get up to the top of the gray area. 2004 only had one flood event over 50k. They barely used the flood control, but they did just a tiny bit, and they were able to keep the outflows less than 20,000. 2005 had one event over 50,000, no use of the flood control area, and all the outflows were really low, under 10k. 2006 had two flood events. Um, the first one, at the end of December, 1st of January, brought inflows of around 140,000, so that's pretty strong storm. They did have a little peak up into the flood control area, and then you can see from the green here, they brought it down pretty rapidly. It looks like the uh, outflows were around 60,000, and um, they got just barely back into the gray zone, and then there was no further flood event. Uh, just normal rent. Well, I take that back. There was, um, in looks like late Feb, early March, one that peaked around 50,000. And uh, they did pop into the flood control area just a little bit there and again brought it down. And this time when they brought it down, you'll see a, a little bit flatter peak here so that uh, that was managed a little bit more smoothly. And then here's where I'm talking about they kind of stayed a little bit into the flood control area, knowing I'm sure that this gray area is coming up to uh, meet them. 2007 was dry. They popped into the flood control area just a little bit, but even this big peak here is only 25,000 CFS, so really no issues. 2008 was dry. 2009 was dry. 2010 was dry. 2011 had no flood events, but a storm of 40,000 um, caused an outflow of 35,000 because they were operating right at the very top of this gray zone. So when they popped up into the white area here, then they had to release water. That looks like they did it fairly gracefully over a period of probably two to three weeks. 2012, no flood events. They did operate in the flood control area here for six weeks or so, but they knew the level was coming up to meet them, so I, that's not it is in the flood control area, but 
maybe not such a big issue. Um, 2013 only had one event with a 78,000 inflow, but the reservoir was not full, so there was no issue. 2014 was dry. 2015 was dry. 2016 had two events over 50,000. Both occurred in March. It did get into the flood zone, but the spills were really low. The reservoir level had been really low before that, so uh, there was really no issue there. Now that you've seen the last several years, look at 2017. In January, they went into the flood control area and they stayed there. And then look at the green down here. They did not spill much, maybe 20 or 30,000. And that spill was occurring on February 7th when, of course, the hole was found. So this is different than other years. I'm wondering why they didn't get back into the gray zone. Um, and then, of course, we all know what the rest of this basically represents. Um, working with the damaged spillway, there's some flat areas there in the green graph, but um, kind of we were all paying attention then, so I uh, don't really feel like I need to go over that. But the early January period, before the world was paying attention and before the spillway had a hole in it, that looks pretty unique to me um, based on the other years I've looked at here. And I will just put it out there for your own judgment. I don't know if somebody was asleep at the switch there or what the situation was. Thanks very much, guys.